everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to the recap of the October 2021 Chemnitz Dine Along live stream. Last month, we dyed yarn inspired by this spooky jack o' lantern photo that has wisps of blue smoke in it. Now, the second colorway that I dyed is a black and orange colorway on Wool to Die For's Zebra Fingering Yarn that is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And although I'm planning to wash all the yarn off camera and show you the first colorway that I did in a moment, I just wanted to remove this and show that the color has all absorbed. Hopefully, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I know I used, yeah, all the colors are good. I know I use the zebra base a lot. Ooh, we have some white, actually. The color is absorbed, but we do have some light patches here, which, honestly, given the jack-o'-lantern, I'm not mad about, and I'm not going to add more color. Uh, I use the zebra base a lot for the colorways, because I just feel like the contrast works so well for various inspiration photos. But anyway, I'm gonna wash it off camera, but I wanna show you the other colorway. On Stroll, here is my black, some intentional white spots, and blue colorway. Now on that side, the blue is a little dark. I do have a brighter blue on the other side. Uh, the blue I used was Frozen, which is not really the right tone for the blue in the photograph. I probably should have used baby blue eyes or something to get a little bit of a brighter blue. But anyway, all the dye here has absorbed as well. And as I said, I'm going to go wash the yarn off camera so I can then show you the finished dry yarn. But I just wanted to show the yarn in the pan because, well, it's the next morning and everything's cool. I don't feel like this is the spookiest type of colorway I have ever dyed, but it does scream fall to me. And I'm very excited by having a fall colorway with blue instead of green. Like, I really like the way this colorway came out. Now, is this the best representation of the photograph I started with? Not really. The blue I used was frozen and I mixed some black in it at points because I didn't like it as bright but I really needed a pinker blue. I think something like Baby Blue Eyes might have given the slightly more purple-leaning blue that we saw on, in the haze by the jack-o'-lanterns. That being said, I don't think I would have gone for this color combination of black, I think blazing orange, and frozen. I wouldn't have gone there if not for this photograph, and I love the result. So, this is one reason why it's really fun to start colorways from an inspiration photo. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you nail it and you think, man, that's exactly like the photo. And other times, maybe you start going in the direction of the photo and then shift when you realize you're creating a colorway that you love. And that is okay as well. And this is a big reason why I enjoy sharing my dyeing process for these dialogues because it's okay if you're creating something you love to lean into that, even if it's slightly different from where you started. Of course, to be completely fair, if you have a commission or a special order and you're dyeing yarn for someone else, then of course you want to try to achieve a vision. But don't forget that dyeing yarn is an art form, and so it's okay to let that art speak to you and sort of shift where you're going. And that's something I think that it took me a while to get there, because sometimes I get hung up and disappointed when things don't match my vision. But it's okay to lean in and go with what you're feeling, and I'm really happy with this yarn. As for the zebra base, this one feels a little bit spookier. We have a bright leading into a dustier orange, some pale wispy gray, and then some deeper charcoal gray, which never quite gets black. Uh, but let's zoom into one of the darkest sections. Even in the most charcoal area, you can still see the difference between the plies. I am sure that there's a depth of shade where you wouldn't see that contrast anymore, but I think that dyeing this like a 
dark, dark color could be really, really fun because it would add just like a little bit of dimension. So if you want to see me dye the zebra base something super dark and saturated, like a navy or even a black, let me know down in the comments below. Someone told me on Instagram that the yarn leans uh, a little thick and thin. And it's hard to say without knitting it, but I mean, when I stretch, there are areas that appear thicker and thinner, probably especially around the black ply. Certainly there's areas with more and less twist in here. Uh, thickness wise, the density seems to be pretty even. So if you've knit with this, this yarn base before, I am curious to hear what you think, how it performs because most of my experience with it thus far is through dyeing it, but ooh, it is really fun and I really enjoy the process of dyeing this yarn. You know, we talked about in the live stream how I tend to gravitate, gravitate towards this base when I'm doing a dye along because I enjoy the black that is already mixed into it. It often helps the vision I have for a yarn and on a non superwash yarn, it can be pretty hard to do speckles. Not impossible, but it is harder just because the colors don't strike as fast. If you go back and watch the live stream, I applied the dye and it took a lot longer for the colors to strike here. And in fact, I didn't need to flip and add more color to the other side because of how those colors just really sunk in all the way through the yarn. Anyway, I could have added blue here as well, but there was a greater chance that I would lose the blue and it could lean more brown, which also would have been totally fine, but I really wanted to go more classic, although it's a muted classic, but go for more black and orange. And we ended up with more gray and soft orange, but it still has that Halloween vibe and I am excited. But isn't this space just so much fun? I have no idea why it excites me so much. Maybe because I love playing with color and having a base that is already variegated but in such a simple way and then over dyeing it is so much fun. Do you remember there was a Lion Brand scarfy yarn that was similar. It had sections that were black, sections that were white, and sections that were variegated. And I tried to dip dye it in Broken Violet to, and break Wilton's Violet on it. But unfortunately, uh, because it was only 10 or 20% wool, the colors really like didn't have as much of an impact as I would have hoped. So I think that might be a reason why I'm just enjoying the zebra base so much. But enough talking about the yarn that I dyed. Now it's time for my favorite part of these day along recaps. And it's time to take a look at the yarn you dyed inspired by the same jack-o'-lantern on a hazy evening inspiration photo. Did you incorporate the blue into your yarn or did you stick with the orange and black and white palette that I did on one of my colorways? And it's just so much fun to see the variety of techniques, yarn bases, etc. that people use all from one inspiration photo and how two people can independently come up with something very similar when playing with the same color palette and things that are extremely different. If you would like to be featured in future Chemnitz Dialogue recaps, just share your inspiration photo on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue or reply to the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page. Uh, it's facebook.com slash Chemnitz. And then I'll pull as many as I can to feature in the recap. Typically, if you submit your photos by the 12th of the following month, I will be able to incorporate them because usually that's the earliest that I try to export the recap from the previous month. But you can always feel free to ping me on social media and ask if I've started editing it yet, and I'll be happy to let you know. So again, thank you to everyone who died along with me this month. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you are wondering what we will be dying in November, well, at the time of filming this, I am too, because I currently have no idea. But if I have the photo picked out already, it'll be here right now. And if I haven't picked it out yet, please make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video or when I go live. Because in addition to two edited videos every week, I 
have multiple live streams every month where we dye yarn or do unboxings and have a lot of fun and you don't want to miss any of it. Subscribing is one of the best ways you can help the support the content here, but if you would like other ways to help support the channel as well, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop for yarn that I dye in my videos. I also have a Patreon. You can find links to everything down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.